all-American half pound sweet cure beef patty, lettuce, tomato, This is Singles Going Steady, the podcast dedicated to exploring great singles with a particular eye to the punk, new wave, and DIY eras of the last century. I'm Steve McGowan. And I am Adrian Madoc. We're in a band, The Beef People, who released a single in 1986 on our own label, Zeb Records. But we're record collectors and passionate, especially about the expression of pop music perfection that is the single recording. Exploring the mystery of what makes for a great single is what propelled us to begin this podcast. And this is episode 063. Yes, and we've got a good one for you today. (laughs) Oh yeah, this is a, a, a great single, a great band, a great album. Yes. Tell them about it. It is Supergrass, and uh, we're going to look at the single Grace from the album Loop. Yes, Life on Other Planets, Right, right. it's called. It was uh, released uh, in the early aughts, right? 2002, I'm sorry. Uh, 2002. Uh, Again, we have to shout out to our friend and confidant Chuck. Mims at yeah, Horizon. This, is a, this, is this a was Chuck. one of his recommendations, yes. A Chuck and, special. Oh wow. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and 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 how this has enriched <laughs> my life. I have uh, played I well in the old days it would have been playing the grooves off. I've uh, right. annoyed the, the O's and ones on mm-hmm. the C D. We're going to talk about the single quite a bit, but this is one of those episodes where we're gonna recommend pretty much the whole record life on other planets it's just a great record it's just yeah crazy. and it's of a piece and yes. even though we've got mm-hmm. a single that that's pretty good mm-hmm. it's standing alone on its mm-hmm. own it's even more perfect right. within the, the nest of the album so uh supergrass is an english band they're um, from the oxford area and uh, the main guy in the band is called gaz as as you would be if you were british gaz coombs and Mick Quinn on the bass and Danny Goffey on drums and Gaz's brother Rob became an official member of the band on this record. This is their fourth record. So this is one of those 90s British bands with brothers, right? Right, right. It's it's definitely considered Brit in the Brit pop uh, era. Blur Uh, and Oasis. Blur, Oasis, yes. Uh, So let's talk about Britpop a little bit. Okay, let's talk about it. So when I hear Oasis, which is supposedly the the greatest band of Britpop, um, first of all... Except for those uh, who think Blur is the greatest band, right? right. I I love the brothers. I love the brothers, the the Gallagher brothers. I mean, the the fighting makes the... um, the Davies brothers from the Kinks look like pikers, you know. Right. But um, yeah, I don't know if there was knife play, but there was everything but right. I mean, I, I feel like there were um, Oasis was an interesting band, and they had some good songs, but it was so transparently, clearly Beatles. Right. <laughs> I mean, they weren't even trying to hide it, you know. Um, the, I don't see what the big deal was. It's like, why don't you just go back and listen to Sgt. Pepper? Or, or, oh, so uh, or, we're, you know. the, the mail's going to be coming in now. Yes. So, let's, so this is not a podcast about trashing Oasis. This is about extolling the virtues of the beautiful, beautiful single Grace by yes. mm-hmm. Supergrass, right? Right. Do you have any opinion on Blur? Um they they seem uh, well, here's my opinion on the whole Brit pop thing which right. is I kind of missed it right um, right you know it, it was I was 
busy doing other things during <laughs> the 90s. And it seemed pretty dense on this side of, of the ocean to try to keep up with the minutia. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. There was an awful lot. I, I, mean, I was comparing it earlier to like the English Premier League. Yeah. I mean, there, the, 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 there's the fandom. Very British. The fandom is so intense mm-hmm. and uh, the details are so Byzantine mm-hmm. and the allegiances are so deep and um, you know it just there, there wasn't an easy entry point right. for me you gotta have your club that you support yeah yeah <laughs> and sort of you know like as an interested bystander there really didn't seem right. like a mm-hmm. good entry point for me to come in and, and sort of mm-hmm. uh, walk in and see what that was right. I, you know I, I watch an awful lot of BBC America or at least Very I used much to so. yes. when they you know they used to do Top of the Pops mm-hmm. and um, you could catch Jewel's show so right. you, you would see some some of these bands and you're like that's really interesting that's something mm-hmm. I want to learn more about right. but it was before um, you know, free and easy legal streaming. So yes. I mean, it it just sort of passed me by. So I was uh-huh. really just gobsmacked to hear this album. Right. So to go back to Supergrass, their yes. first record, I should Coco. They they kind of had the 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 good fortune of having a massive single and kind of being branded by it. They had that song all right. Mm-hmm. You know, which you hear in we every all ad. Young. Yes. See your friends, see the sights. It's yeah, all right. 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 So, you know, it's, it's a great little song. But that I think that kind of stuck with them. Yeah. And they, they couldn't get a, out from under that, yeah. is, is my impression. I haven't really read that. but uh, Tragic, tragic success. Yes. So uh, this is their fourth record, uh, Life on Other Planets. Um, the thing I like about it, if you, if you put it in the Britpop pantheon, uh, Gaz has got this serious T Rex thing going on. I mean, he he sounds he can sing just like Mark Bolin, and he plays guitar like him. And they do a little, some stuff on this at the end, which is very Pink Floydy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's not just the um, yeah. It's you not know, the this Beatles. This is the nineties exactly. version of the Beatles. Right, right. So uh, th- that's very interesting. And this band has got the worst case of ADD on re- in recording I think I've ever heard. They just throw everything in all the tracks. There's crazy synth solos, yeah. gurgling things, uh, farm animal sounds, coughing. Um, all it's a of a real sudden, treasure hunt. Yeah, all, it's of, a, an all old of a sudden there'll hunt. be there'll be you know four part harmonies will just appear and disappear. It's great. I mean, it's it's it just it, it's a treat. Yes, it's a real it treat. Really it's is. it's it's a tiramisu for the <laughs> ears. I mean, it's rich. It's mm-hmm. thick. It's delicious. <laughs> it's almost too much. Yes. So let's start off and play the song uh, Grace. Oh yeah, and the, then we'll the tell single. you a little bit we'll about tell you Grace. A little bit about Grace. So here we go from 2002, Life on Other Planets, uh, Supergrass, and their wonderful single, Grace. Save your money. 
for the children You save your money for the children So let me tell you who Grace was yes. and Grace is. Grace is Grace Difford. <laughs> um, and uh, the constant listener will know uh, that that Difford name because that's uh, the daughter of Chris Difford of Squeeze, the yes. lyricist, n- known mainly as the lyricist of Squeeze. And Chris had a studio out back. And um, I, they they did the Supergrass did some early demos there, right. working on this album. And the story goes, and and please don't confuse me with facts because it's such a beautiful story, mm-hmm. is that um, Difford's children would show up at the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, to, to visit. It was right. sort of like one of the regular beats that they would have yeah. is come by and see what the dudes were doing. The kids would just hang out in yeah. the studio. And, yeah. um, and Grace, uh, she was uh, always had like a lunchbox full of treasures and money. So that's where you get the, the, the lyric about... Um, save your money for the save children. Save your money for the children. Mm-hmm. And the, the song grew out of, you know, just jamming in preparation for, for Loop. Right. Um, you know, it just sort of came together as they enjoyed the children mm-hmm. and, and you know, that the lyrics presented themselves. And Grace is now a successful photographer, <laughs> uh, grown up. You know, 2002 right. is evidently a little longer ago than I would like to. Uh, yeah, than we'd, we'd care yeah, to think and, about. And this was in preparation for that. So. <laughs> Well, you know, that's this is uh, the children of, of those who are in sort of our our singles going mm-hmm. steady pantheon. Exactly. So we're, we're, the the cycle continues to to turn, right? Yeah. <laughs> and there's another interesting connection in that of uh, you know the parent and the child. We talked about Chris Difford mm-hmm. um, in his. Um, biography right um in the um if i didn't love you i think that might we keep saying it's 005 it might really be (laughs) i think it's 004 004. i think it's 00 something i think it's 004 the tiny collector's edition the tiny collector's edition uh squeeze single Mm -hmm. but um sort of like chris's years in the wilderness one of the things he did was act as the personal assistant personal manager for brian Brian ferry Ferry. from roxy music yeah and that was you know he's got some stories about sort of the um craziness the craziness <laughs> and the subjugation that yes. was involved there um and grace difford had a, a stint as a personal assistant as well but it was from nicole for nicole serzinger however you say that the the woman from um, pussycat dolls, pussycat dolls. <laughs> so like father like daughter yes, you know you got creativity but uh, you also have to to, to uh, yeah earn those pounds the other thing about this single uh it's a fantastic single there's a just a a charming video oh yes and uh, we we'll will, link, we that. will link to that and it, it shows the band playing in the, their rehearsal area and the little girl looking at them and and she has a little uh controller and she starts to mix the record uh the way she wants to hear it and she mixes it in a psychedelic way and they're, they're up in a plane, and it's just so cute. Yes, it, it's, it really it's adorable. Yeah. It's funny because the, you know mm-hmm. that this band has some some real hard edges, but yes. it's a real a softy of a yes. single. Yes, yeah, you know, it really but it's is. not it's not a it's not a wimpy single. It's mm-hmm. not it's not cloying or or mm-hmm. uh, annoying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we want to talk about a couple of the other songs on this because we can't not talk about them. They're right in our wheelhouse, right? And, and you know, we it was we sort of um, uh, reverse engineered our way into this <laughs> single because it was like this album is great. We need to talk right. about this album. <laughs> is there a single? <laughs> and the single that you have of Grace is actually on pink oh, vinyl. It's, it's a very cool, beautiful yes. object. It's, it's the British one on Parlophone Records. Yes, with the, the little sir, you know, with the single spindle instead mm-hmm. of the big fat it's forty-five hole. Oh, yeah, for a, for a single geek, it's it's the, the real deal. Beautiful um, mm-hmm. sleeve yep. with uh, f- uh, black and white mm-hmm. photography. Right, and it's just something high contrast. Else. 
So they do a, they do a song on this record called "It Is the Evening of the Day," which starts <laughs> yeah. off obviously like a kink song, but it has a chorus that references Spinal Tap. Yes, uh, the Spinal Tap song "All the Way Home," when the two guys, uh, uh, um, David Saint Hubbins and Nigel Tufnell. Nigel Tufnell are talking about their days in Squatney. Yeah, right. And, <laughs> the, I, this might be the first song they wrote together. Right, right. right. Yeah, all um, the way home. And if all she's the way home. And the line is, if she's not on that three fifteen, I'm going to know what sorrow means. They sing it in the movie, and the guys in Supergrass actually put this to a different song. Right. So they, they plucked a couple lines. I mean, there's some references right. um, uh, that they they have. Uh, Mm-hmm. seeded into the song right. but and you know it wasn't a fresh reference at that time <laughs> no. either right because this was a <laughs> yeah. you know, the album came out in 2002 uh, yeah, and you yeah. know, Spinal Tap with 83, 84 yeah it's an I ancient mean, movie yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, but it totally grabbed us of course and then then this song Evening of the Day and we're going to play you pro- probably from the middle of it till a little bit towards the end it breaks down into a sort of uh, um, jazz Freeform jazz, jazz free exploration jazz, yeah. as, per, uh, yeah, as per Spinal Tap. tap. Yes, where uh, they talk about, uh, you know, he's so messed up that he uh, he doesn't know what he's on about. Right, right. <laughs> Maybe he should go lie down. <laughs> oh, it, it, I, I, they play with their tools in such... Yes. I mean, it, it's just an exuberant album mm-hmm. where, you know, like you say, they, they, mm-hmm. all the tools are used, right. and they're used well. It's right. it's There's excess, but it's excess mm-hmm. in the service of a great piece of art. Right. So we're going to play a little bit of this now. We won't play the whole thing. It's evening of the day, and then into the little coda, uh, which kind of reminds me of, uh, you know my name, look up the number by the right, Beatles. Right. <laughs> Here's Supergrass. <laughs> So there it was. Uh, you could hear them, you know, coughing in the studio, uh, bongo jam. 
I think there were some animal noises. Right, everything, <laughs> everything to the service of this great tapestry that they're weaving, and, and all things go in, and yeah. they, you know, happy accidents. Exactly. And the, there's one more thing from this record. The, the, there are a lot of r- really good songs on this you record. You will not right? be sorry. Yeah. It's just tremendous. I mm-hmm. mean, I can't tell you how many mm-hmm. times I've listened to this in the last all the way through, last and, year. and it just yeah. it just kills you. It's it's uh, very highly recommended by both of us. But uh, there's this one song called La Song, and we both picked up immediately on the uh, the Strangler sort of uh, riff on it. Uh, it's got that Strangler's bass sound. Yeah. Um, we just did a podcast on the Stranglers and the Barracuda bass sound and all that, and they were a big influence on us. So we're going to play you just, just the intro of this song by Supergrass. It's called La Song from Loop, and here it is. So there we go. Um, Supergrass and La Song. Obviously, you know, like a lot of the Britpop groups like Elastica, we did we did uh, talk about them in the Stranglers podcast. They um, These bands in Britain were as as influenced by bands like the Stranglers as they were, you know, the Kinks and the and the Beatles, really, you know, they they uh, they they know this. They know the sound, and they go for it. Right, uh, it's not uh, not a rarity like right, it would be over right. here because right. they were on the charts over there. We talked about that in the other podcast, so we don't have to really go over that again. But um, got that JJ bass sound. Yes, <laughs> the Barracuda bass. So, uh, as we wrap this up, recommendate. Well, we got recommendations mm-hmm. and cover. Which one okay. do you want first? Cover. Okay, who can you hear covering Grace? Um, again, I would like to hear um, Mark Boland and T Rex do it. Ooh. You know, just maybe probably a little slowed down, a little more Jeepstery, um, you know, uh, a little more out of tune. <laughs> but it would be great. <laughs> the days yeah. before <laughs> yes. electronic tuners. Exactly, exactly. I would love to hear it because, I mean, they definitely have that influence, so I'd like to hear it reflected back on them. What about you? Do you hear someone coming? Yeah, coming? you know, um, in the, the, the sort of happy accident of of having a a podcast that we just recorded not long ago by Christmas, I yes. really hear Christmas. Yes, <laughs> and you know, uh, even though this is an incredibly lush album, but I think a muscular, mm-hmm. you know, no prisoners trio right. Right. like like Christmas when you've got mm-hmm. the sort of the secret weapon of. of um, the vocals right. of having Liz, Liz's, Liz's vocals. Liz's vocal, yeah. yeah you can hear her singing this yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, so that's, I'd like to hear that. That would be great, yes. Definitely. So we pick two bands that don't exist anymore right. to do <laughs> covers. So. So that's part of the, that's yeah, part of the deal. Know, it's a alive, <laughs> yeah. dead, yep. real, imaginary, imaginary, or even <laughs> fictional, mm-hmm. right? So um, recommendations. Um, obviously, I'm going to recommend this record. Um, yes. Supergrass, Life on Other Planets, or it's also called Loop, obviously. You really got to get it. Uh, thanks to Chuck Mims for this one. Um, yes, Chuck. It's been on our our uh, our digital turntable <laughs> pretty much nonstop. And mental turntable yes. when it's not on mm-hmm. the actual one. They throw everything in. If there's a button on the console that says, don't press this button, they press it. They press it a lot. <laughs> they do. Uh, they, they, and, and you'll be glad for it. <laughs> yes, yes. What about you? Do you have any recs? Yeah, I, my rec is going to go to the Halloween side of things. Good, so good. This is the time of the year that we're recording this is strawberry season. Yes. And, um, boy, the people do all sorts of you know, the traditional things 
with with strawberries, like mm-hmm. you know, baking them in a pie, strawberry and, shortcake, yeah, all mm-hmm. that. But um, strawberries don't need you to mess with them very much. Nope. And you certainly don't need to add sugar to them and things like that. Mm-hmm. Slice them up. Add a little bit of balsamic vinegar, throw mm-hmm. them in the fridge, and you've just let them macerate. Got, let them macerate. Um, can't give them their privacy and let them <laughs> macerate. And um, th- they're just there's nothing better. Mm-hmm. And um, you can dress them up with you know in traditional ways with things like uh, you know get a biscuitville and get a biscuit mm-hmm. and you've got shortcake. Yep, or um, ice cream or whipped cream. Ice cream, whipped cream, mm-hmm. just by themselves. It's, you can't Other fruit. <laughs> yeah. A spoon is probably yeah. the best thing. We did that last night. It was just fabulous, yes. wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We had mm-hmm. had it with a little bit of like mm-hmm. cheap grocery store lemon, yeah. um, light lemon mm-hmm. ice cream. You wouldn't think that would be very good, but that was just dynamite. Yeah. Good recommendation. The strawberries and super grass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're very much of the same experience. Yes, and it's all same natural. Same pleasure center. <laughs> All right, so this has been uh, Singles Going Steady 063, Supergrass. They're a great single, Grace, and their wonderful record, Life on Other Planets. Um, It's been great talking with you today, and we will see you soon. We will. Happy strawberries. To learn more about the artists and recordings we just talked about, visit our website at zubrecords.com. And click on the Singles Going Steady icon. You'll also find links to the persons, places, and things we recommend, and much more. You can find episodes of Singles Going Steady on our website or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Singles Going Steady is brought to you by the power and majesty of Zub Records. Zub Zub Records. Records. Smart Smart sounds for sharp people. people.